mentioned excitement and passion and, and, the, and this role, this internship uh, reiterated that. What, what were the things that you sort of noticed that you, you knew in your gut that this is, this is for you in terms of pathways? Yeah, look, I think I'm, I'm big on helping people and I love the feeling of fulfillment that you get when you see a client or an athlete or, or someone that you're working relatively close with achieving success or whether that be coming back from an injury or, or playing their first game at AFL or Sandful or, or A-League or whatever it was, um, or even just watching them improve and getting better in the weight room. And I think because it's such a scope to see such large improvements with relatively untrained and youth athletes, um, we sort of had some guys getting relatively big PBs and progressing on and, and sort of progressing towards ALE contracts um, and just feeling like you have something to provide and something to offer and, and that you can actually have a relatively big part in, in an athlete's career and an athlete's success was, was really, really fulfilling to me. Uh, how did you sort of approach the internship from a um, yeah, mindset point of view and, and for the SNCs listening in, what do you think are some key pillars to focus on to when you're doing it, taking on an internship? Yeah, look, I, th I think the big thing that I always tried to do and had at the forefront of my mind was being enthusiastic um, and just remembering what your role as an intern actually is and that you probably won't get to do the very glamorous things early or, or at all. Um, but knowing that whatever you do will still have an impact and will still be positive. So um, I went in with that real mindset of just doing whatever I can to contribute, um, being an active listener, actively trying to learn um, and being actively engaged. So we sort of had a, a two day a week intern roster. Um, but again, relatively pestily, I tried to rock up sort of three or four days a week and volunteered on game days and just tried to be around it as much as I could more so not knowing that any opportunities were going to progress, but more around trying to take out of it what I could and get everything out of that intern opportunity that I have. From a uh, mentor, building mentor relationships and building your networking point of view, uh, what would be some some tips that you found that's quite effective in terms of building your relationships with these, like there's some significant names in the industry that have been in there for a long time. Uh, I, you can imagine that someone new to the, the industry might be a bit intimidated or overwhelmed with, with meeting um, these type of characters, but how would you go about developing a relationship with, with the practitioners? Yeah, look, it's a great question. And um, I think it all comes down to taking on the knowledge and advice that they have and being open and humble with the, those people are in their positions because they're extraordinarily good at what they do and they've done a lot of cool things. Um, and sort of the big thing that I was sort of thought to myself with all of my mentors and still do to this day is that they've probably forgotten more about strength conditioning or high performance than, than I've ever known. Um, so any piece of advice that they give you or, or just day-to-day -day interactions with those people is making sure that you are open and actively listening to them and taking that advice on board. And then I think reflection is a huge part of that as well in that you can then take that advice and have a think about it and say, yes, this is something that I, I really value and think will have um, a huge impact on what I do or conversely, potentially with what we're trying to get out of it at the moment, that piece might not be great and I would do it this way instead. Um, but it's very much having that open mindset of taking on board everything that they have to share with you. Because about some sort of key pillars that you like to focus on with um, the Adelaide Crows. Yeah, look, so I guess at the Crows, sort of we have some relatively set in structure processes that we've adapted and, and manipulated through the years. Um, and we've sort of broken our first to four year athletic development, but particularly our strength and power program down into three key pillars that we see as, as essential. The first pillar of that being is our athletes earning the right to progress. Um, so we find quite regularly that you've sort of got guys who may roll in at a completely different range on their athlete development journey from players rolling in who are relatively open in that they have not done any gym previously mm -hmm. um, or players rolling in with a relatively good training age who are proficient in some of the basic lifts and can, can move relatively well for their age group. Um, so to do that, we sort of say that you have to show us the capabilities that you have rather than just saying, oh, I can do X, Y, and Z, is actually objectively showing us that you have the capabilities to do something. So the big ones that we use there are using objective markers for progression. Um, so quite basically, we will start with just your key fundamental movement patterns. So 
can you do, can you push, pull, squat, hinge, lunge, twist, carry? Um, and then can you jump and land and hop proficiently? If the box is ticked for yes there, then you may move up into some slightly more progressed options. Take us through that. So is that keeping the movement simple because you're not getting the same touch points? Um, and it's something that you've, you reference off in terms of a philosophy, you know, keeping it simple, but this, keeping the standards high. So that might be an element to, to bring in there. But how do you how do you sort of manage that where you want to try and get them stronger and building muscle mass, but you're not getting as much interaction or engagement with them in the off season? Yeah, look, it's a great question. Um, and I think the big one that you sort of touched on there is one of our key athletic development philosophies is, is keep the program simple and do the basic things savagely well. Mm -hmm. um, so one of our other sort of things that we, we think too is that we like our programs to be complex in design, but simple in execution. So for our athletes over the off season, we will keep their programs relatively simple um, in that we will just use very basic lifting techniques, stick to your big key rocks and not do anything overly fluffy or overly fancy, mm -hmm. um, but also making sure that our athletes have the ability to actually complete their program no matter where they are too. So, for example, you know, we've got athletes in, in America and in Europe and sort of all over the country at the moment. So when we prescribe our off-season programs, we use Team Builder but we make sure that every single piece of that athlete's program is on team builder from their injury prevention to their prep to train, to their running, to their strength and power work. Mm -hmm. um, and we also use one of the functions on team builder, which is a tag option. So rather than let's say, for example, prescribing barbell bench press, we'll prescribe it as a horizontal push tag, which when the athlete clicks on that option, you get sort of six or seven different options that drop down to that. And the rationale behind that is that Although we've got a really well kitted out gym here at the Crows, if you're just going to some random gym in Europe or in America and you can't do our program with the exact prescribed exercises, then it just allows that little bit of variation and that little bit of leeway in that something is definitely better than nothing. Mm -hmm. And that athlete has enough options there that they can pick something that they actually have the equipment available to them rather than just having to skip that exercise because they don't have the ability to complete it. Mm 